Yeah. There's aliens for they sure. They keep coming up with new stuff. You are listening to the Bomb Hole. Bomb Hole Podcast. It's going to be very hot. It's going to be very uncomfortable for everybody. <laughs> the Bomb Hole. That bitch is crazy. All right, here we go. Another Bomb Hole. Sitting here with my boy, Stony Buds. What is up? How you doing, Stony? I'm doing really good today. Yeah. You feel good? As always. I mean, what if I was just like, I'm not doing well today? <laughs> That'd be funny. No, I'm doing great. Doing good great. to hear. Well, I'm happy about who we got in the guest seat Me today. Too. Nirvana. How you doing, Nerve? I'm doing good. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, so, Nerve, you're from California originally, correct? Yep. San Diego, California. Nice. You grew up surfing, snowboarding? I grew up, I actually grew up surfing. Yeah. Yeah. Did I hear you did some competitive surfing back in the day? I, I tried. You tried? I tried. Yeah. <laughs> I tried really hard. Yeah. <laughs> so you're pretty good, though. It was a lot of paddling. Ah. Paddling around. You got to go hard tough to get those waves. <laughs> yeah. You know, Buds, how's your surf game? Dude, days? I actually, I spent like three summers living with Travis Wood. He used to work for okay. Forum and all that. And he just threw me in the shark pit one day at San Clemente Pier. And there was, like, pros killing yeah. it. And he's just like, get out there. You got this. And I got pummeled. <laughs> <laughs> but I started, the second you think you know what's going on in the ocean, something happens and you get just played again. Yeah. And yep. that, the ocean is a beast. Yep. It really is. And you're yeah. probably out there and kids are ye- yelling oh. at you. They're like, left, right, yeah, right. Like, what yeah. are they talking about? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's territorial. Uh, Some dude just in from rips people. past you and basically yeah. you get beat up over there. Mm-hmm. Not as bad as Hawaii, but... <laughs> Oh. So Wait, you're pretty good. Uh, I could surf. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. that's always a question that I'm like, I don't know, dude. Yeah. yeah, it's it's a crazy sport, I think, but love it. So then, at one at one point, you started going to Mountain High. Is that where you sharpened your teeth? Yep. We uh, so my mom didn't know how to swim. So what? yeah, she's from the Philippines, and that's what I was gonna say. I I think she grew up. Isn't that an island? It's an island. It's a uh, archipelago. Uh, or yeah. What are they called? They're something fancy <laughs> something that I fancy. can't pronounce. I, yeah. Yeah. Arca. But, I can't. I can picture it. Can't yeah. pronounce it. But it's an, made a out of islands. Of islands. A group of islands yeah. that are okay. yeah, and uh, I think she just grew up inland, so then never learned how to swim. So then, my dad and I surfed, and then once my brother got old enough which he was like four or five we went up to actually snow summit and that was our first snowboarding outing together and she loved it so then we ended up getting season passes at mountain high and i think it was just dummy cheap to get a season was pass was ktg there killing the game in the park Corey Cronk? Yeah, yeah was he Corey, like hustling was like tickets <laughs> in the lot like clip Corey, tickets Corey like, Cronk gets an air horn <laughs> yeah he's dope and yeah, it was like him and he's kind of a legend in those parts, though. For sure, yeah. and like Matt Hammer. Oh, sick! And at the time, well, like once we got into it, there it was like Lori Courier, Krista Edwards, like Desiree would be there, yep. Harrison, and that, that was like kind of later on. But when we very first started, it was like we got to get season passes. Was that Go where uh, Huggy did that shoot where the people were jumping over? This might be before your time. That was there. Jump- Oh, it was Bear the I bikini? Thought, I, I thought, thought it that, was Mount High. Maybe it didn't maybe. Oh, it might. I think it might have been Mount High. Yeah, okay. He yeah. had bikini models. <laughs> yeah, and jumping. Yeah. Off. Hockey used to love that mountain. <laughs> kind of a picturesque, like the way the mountain drops off. Kind of cool looking spot. Yeah, for photos was, and stuff. For yeah, photos. For photos. Yeah. I don't know how the park was or anything, but park was uh, I th- you know, two thousands. Yeah. <laughs> 2000s part you might expect but you know lots what? of they, boxes they were ahead of the curve over there i remember watching the 411s on the east coast mm. and like seeing snow summit and that seemed like that was the place yeah to it was go. like yeah, the spot the part you the park used to be in snow summit yeah back then so we would we would go to mountain high and big bear but my parents liked the drive to mountain high because it was just like a straight shot mm-hmm. yeah so is it your mom's from the philippines is your dad from the states um he is uh, first generation. Okay. So my, both my grandparents on both sides are from the Philippines. Oh, cool. Yeah. Nice. Quick question. Did your mom ever learn to swim? She, I recently was in San Diego and she, we got her a boogie board. Awesome. So Respect. I, I think she's. Ted teacher. What? As long as like she has it like connected to her. She feels safe. She feels safe. And so that was really cool. You know, my dad taught me how to swim. Chucked me right off the boat. <laughs> Sink or swim, kid. <laughs> I swam. 
You, isn't your mom a crazy, not crazy, isn't your mom really good at yoga? Or like she, a, a yoga person? She's like does, a, she does yoga, yeah. yeah. She um, does it on Instagram as like oh, kind of cool. like a side hustle. Yeah. But and she's pretty, kind of a big, big deal, is, I heard maybe, or a lot of followers. She had a, she has a lot of followers and she used to yoga for some company, like they would send her stuff and pay her for just doing yoga on Instagram. They don't call that a yogi? Yo- yogi, yeah, they're yeah, yogis. She's an OG it. though in the game. Huh? She was an OG, yeah. She like, so she she gets an air horn, I think. Yeah, yeah. that's badass. We're gonna, we're gonna hit her with an air I horn. I mean, the fact that she has that many <laughs> followers, like that's dope. I was Doing like, a yo- she's yogis. a constant, like, yeah, inspiration. It's all about it. yeah, yeah, I was that's just like, cool. this is so sick that you're, you know, a mom and you're sponsored. Like, yeah, that's teaching dope. you a thing or two about social media probably. yeah definitely yeah. <laughs> i'm just like uh, she, mom help me out <laughs> did she kind of give you like that I, I don't i met your mom actually at your guys wedding she seems yeah. like a sweetheart um but did she kind of like have that yogi calm did she like push any of that stuff on you or like did you get any of that by osmosis or learn I think I got a, a lot of it from actually my dad because she started yoga later. Oh, okay. Yeah, so um, she started practicing later on, and then um, in the beginning my dad kind of told us what yoga was, and I did Aikido when I was younger too. So that was... Uh, What's Aikido? It's a Japanese martial art. Ooh. Or it's like um, you don't attack people. You take their energy ah. and divert it. Some sort so, of energy vampire. You huh? think if somebody no, if they're like if they're like punching you, oh, you, yeah, you like divert the move. Yeah, yeah. You think if somebody's trying cool. to fuck you up, you could defend yourself? Divert. Maybe. <laughs> I stopped I stopped when I actually started snowboarding. Ah. <laughs> Just sight in the back of her mind, somebody's gonna come in, swing at her, she's gonna pull some diversions. <laughs> a little diversion. Yeah. Just kinda, Good tactics. It probably translates into the snowboarding though. I think I think it did because it it taught me how to fall. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. So it, it was like we would roll from standing and then like falling when we were like practicing. So I think that falling. That, or yeah, right, I think that translated. Crucial. Yeah, especially in the streets. Jeez. Yeah, I think that yeah translated because like I never knock on wood. I like never really broke bone like especially wrists because that's super common mm-hmm. in snowboarding but like never really did that mm-hmm. scaphoid wrists all that kind of stuff yeah is, like most popular injury most popular <laughs> i mean most uh, it's most co- common most common yeah yeah say, not popular <laughs> well it's really popular these days <laughs> Everybody's doing it. You're going to want to go out there. You're going to want to break that wrist. My first time out <laughs> the Mount Hood, I fell off the roof of a car, you know, being a jackass, yep. riding on my buddy's hood, broke both my wrists. Oh, yeah. Had to go to hood with two casts. Oh, yeah. Just like, tight. Well, Still be, went, though. Being good at snowboarding, people don't realize it's the, a key ingredient is being good at falling. Like yeah. no, no, I should say that, knowing how to fall. Mm-hmm. That's crucial. Especially you guys. I see you guys in action shooting with you all about falling right. And you guys, it's rare when you're in the mode that you guys get hurt, you know, and it's always amazing to me. Which is dope. Yeah. Just all all the pros, you know, you guys just seem to know how to fall. You kind of transitioned into jumping and riding more like the slope style contest or, or how did you get into contests right how did that evolution start yeah contests um so that was all you know we got our season passes we're all gung-ho like yeah let's try this park thing and then it, like my dad would actually like try to get us to hit like these tiny little you know two foot boxes at mountain high and so my brother and i would try to like learn we like learning how to ride park and at the time, there was USA Essays, and I, I don't know how frequent that is now. I think they still have those, right? Yeah, they still have those, yeah. but it, it was – oops, sorry. Yeah, keep my bad. Yeah, they don't the, – I don't think they have them as frequently, but they um, used to have contests every weekend. And then it was – it didn't matter what it was. It was, like, border cross, half pipe, whatever. And, like, my parents were like, oh, this seems cool. Like, let's be a part of this. Let's volunteer – be part of this organization and then like meet some other people that are into this and then that's how we met the whole fam yeah yeah that's how we met like all the people and then like had this you know community aspect of going every weekend and that was like really big into the forum culture like mountain high forum and people 
Do you guys remember that? Forum, like, uh, I didn't like no no online forums, forums where people yeah, comment like, and that wasn't big for us, but you should elaborate on that. So so there was a like Mountain High had a, a forum where people could, you know, submit comments or like threads and people would get on there almost kind of like a precursor to Yobi, I would okay. say. Ah. Yeah, and so people would get information on there or like talk shit or just it was wild. Yeah, that's crazy. I didn't see. I didn't experience that because uh, who was on here talking about like the the people that would show? There was like different crews at Mount. That was Des. Yeah. She was talking yeah, about the forum as well. Yeah, that well, was, you, was when you started, that. it was in nineteen oh three. It was like they, <laughs> they didn't were even have calculators. They were actually like, scratching it into it a those, stone. Uh, I think it well, was like you a would stone. move the beads over. <laughs> you know what I mean? And sundials and stuff. There was no. <laughs> they didn't even have computers. It was, it was insane. It, it was, was a wild. sundial. It was a wild time. So, so the uh, you're doing the forums and and you're doing USASA. Did you at any point make it to nationals or do um, all the contests? Yeah, we did. We like would go and we would go to nationals. We almost treated it as like like contests weren't a thing where it's like yeah I got to win. It was more like this is a fun thing to do. And then like I yeah taught me how, me and my brother how to snowboard almost just like doing the contest. You're l- learning how to get like learning fishing. how to do park. At while the, the contest. we're at the contest. Yeah. So did your parents ride in it too? Or? No. Okay. No. <laughs> they just helped out. Yeah, they just helped out. They volunteered and cool. yeah. Did you win any of these? Um, I don't remember honestly. Don't even remember. Don't e- I don't even remember. You were more worried about learning some moves, having fun. I remember trying to learn how to like jump onto a you know, like a, a rail. Yeah. And I like banged into it a thousand times. And it was just like, oh, I'm having so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Your parents were supportive about it, though. Yeah, mm-hmm. they were super supportive. So what was, how far was the drive to the mountain? Um, it was two and a half hours. Yeah, see, that's, yeah. My, you wouldn't catch my mom driving me. Yeah, they loved it. Yeah. it. yeah, we we actually had a, we had a little cabin up in Wrightwood. Oh, cool. And then um, across the street, the Piccolo family actually lived there. Oh, wow, nice. Yeah. So, like, I remember more of like Blake uh he's like the oldest little piccolo brother but then like later on met got to know Kyle more mm-hmm. yeah Kyle gets an air horn we're gonna have yeah. an air horn. um and then so you're doing USASA you're banging into rails having a good time <laughs> don't know if you're winning don't know Is if you're not like winning you're going off the jump and <laughs> cramming your nose in before you even like get up on the rails <laughs> like, 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 <laughs> yeah and Jump then, onto it. Yeah, get on it. <laughs> at a, at a certain point in time, did you did you elevate your contest game past USASA and start doing some of the bigger contests? It turned into me going to like Grand Prix and things, and then I think Rev Tour. Yep. Yeah. I remember that? Yep. So I did Rev Tours and Grand Prix, and then yeah, I was just like fully in contest world. That's crazy. I didn't know that. Yeah, and it, it it honestly it didn't dawn on me that there was another path in snowboarding uh. until I started working at High Cascade. Wow, the classic common, classic. common <laughs> story of the bomb hole. It's so cool. What yeah. de- what department are we talking over yeah. there? Yeah, I was in the K unit. K unit gets up. Is that ball. cooking? We are the kitchen. Sick. Yeah. Good for you. Dubs was in there, and I I remember so clearly the day that I got because it, you know when you're younger and you're just like. Uh, all I want to do is work at High Cascade. Like, that's where all the people go. And, like, that's, like, at the time I looked up to, you know, like, Dez and Harrison and Scott, and I was like, everyone's at High Cascade. Like, how do I, I get be there. I got to be there. How do I get a job? And then um, I dished to, actually did dish to ride. Mm. Yeah, the year prior. And then that next year, it was, like, a month before they started. And Danica, my friend Danica and I were, I lived in Mammoth. I moved out when I was 18 to go to Sierra Coso Community College. And then we were driving down to L.A. to go somewhere to, like, a theme park. And I get a call, and it's a bunch of screaming. And I'm like, who am I talking to right <laughs> now? Like, what is going on? And it ends up being, like, Dubs, Worm, and I think uh, Jagger – all like screaming on the phone saying you got a job ah, like like sick. you have a job here like you got to start in a month <laughs> in a month <laughs> you awesome. got to move up to hood and i was like oh my god no way <laughs> that's incredible yeah so that was like i'll never forget that mm-hmm. 
That's that life changing moment, huh? Yeah, I was t- uh, like twenty one. I think I just turned twenty one. That's cool. Did time. you graduate college? Um, I finished my I finished my AA at Sierra Coso, and then I was you know I was like twenty years old and was like like the state of California paid for my college. Nice. And then like I just had to pay for room and board, and then um, <laughs> I was like, okay, now I have to pay more money for college. And I don't want to put myself into, like, $20,000 in debt. No. I was, like, 20 years old. Like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Dude, I've been getting calls. People trying to collect uh, college debt for me. I never went to college. Probably a racket. <laughs> yeah. Probably somebody's got a good racket. Dude, going, I keep getting this message, like, yeah, we need to talk about your college uh, bills. That's and I'm probably just like, a scam. Yeah, yeah a smart scam. Man. Someone in another country, probably, like, just, they got a whole room full of people like, just probably, calling them up. And some people probably pay. The yeah. percentage is probably, they call five people, probably yeah. like two-thirds, or, you know, half. Half least, of them do have half loans. Half of them probably have loans. Like, oh, like, oh, I do owe a bunch of money. Here yeah. you go. Yeah, that Not makes sense. Not tight, man. That's terrible. <laughs> terrible. Yeah, a lot of those scams out there. I was thinking when you were talking about how you went to Dish to Ride yeah. at first, and I think that's, that's what it's called on Dish to Dish Ride. To, well, there's Dig to Ride where you go and you shovel to ride the park. Yeah. Or you can wash dishes to ride the park at High Gas yeah. Or cook to ride, or they don't... No, do you know, no. you're not going to let some unit. rando yeah, <laughs> cook your food. True. <laughs> so the bottom of the totem pole, dish to ride. And I think a lot of people need to hear that where you're... like They're like, I don't have a job. I, I, they're looking at the roadblocks, and it's... Sometimes you just got to go show up. Mm-hmm. Like a big percentage is just showing up, l- like letting people know that you're here, you're available, you want to do it. And it somehow always seems to work out, I feel like. I don't know if that's what happened with you. Well, I was wondering that. Can you just go to Hood and not even have anything set up and it works out? That's what, I feel like yeah. I did that. Yeah, that's what you yeah. did. Yeah, huh? you could definitely do Like, you, you could just definitely hope for the do best that. if you know some people. And Like, I remember I was I was 18 at the time, and I, I was like, <laughs> I guess I was juiced to go snowboard. Juiced. Because uh, I actually, like, I don't talk about it a lot, but, like, I tore everything in my knee when I was... 17, 16, doing jumps mm. at the Grand Prix in Killington. But Some hard East Coast boiler ice. Or oh, yeah. yeah. I bounced off that knuckle. Shh. But I, I didn't know that it was torn until like six months afterwards. Wow. And so I like fully blew out everything, and like fractured my femur. You were like still riding and stuff? I after, was or? still, yeah. I finished, I, I think I like made finals or something and like finished it out and... I could walk and run, so it was super confusing at the time. And I was like, I remember the pediatrician or doctor was like, you're never going to be able to snowboard again. Whoa. And I was like 17. And hearing that, I was just started bawling. Jeez. And then I went to like a real sports doctor, and he was like, oh, we'll get you back on the board in four months. <laughs> we like, deal with this all the time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great. But, yeah, it was – It was like my senior year. I was, or after my senior year, I really wanted to get back on snow. So I went to Hood, no plan, had a place to stay, hiked up the mountain to Public Park because they weren't as strict back then. So I'd hike up to the park and hike the jumps for three weeks. They didn't give you any beef? No. That's cool. Nobody ever. You could fly under the radar. Yeah. Yeah. Nowadays they're on you, huh? Yeah. I flew, yeah, flew under the radar. No one said anything. And then I think I bought a ticket like maybe two days out of the three weeks I was there. Nice. Giving giving back a little. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Good percentage right there. But, um, yeah, it's, it's wild because I remember circling back. I sent an email to whoever was the like generic email at Wendell's and was like, I heard about this dig to ride thing. Like, can I, how do I sign up? <laughs> Just asking about it. And they're like, whoever was the director at the time actually responded to me and was like, oh, this is a really, uh, like, that's not really a thing. You have to be here if you want to try to do it. It's pretty, uh, no. like, not it's not under the radar, but it's... It's kind of a loose operation. Loose operation, yeah. 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 They see who shows up and then just throw throw you out there and see who kills it. Yeah. I'm glad I, I got to dish to ride. Yeah, that yeah, sounds then. like a good well, program. That's, that's why it ends up circling back to being cool. It's like if you show up and you meet people and they're cool and you're cool and you're a good person. It works out. They'll be like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Come dish to ride. If you meet people, you're a dick. You ain't gonna be you're dishing. Not, then you're, then you end digging. up never getting the hood Does experience. Does it still work like this? 
I don't know if hood's even a thing right now. Oh, uh, I guess, yeah. Because there's no camps. Yeah, it's a little weird right oh, now. Oh, yeah. It's a, we were just up there. It was a day-by-day operation and only day campers. Mm, no one. Yeah. yeah, you can't stay at the camp or whatever. Yeah, you couldn't stay on campus. So I've had some kids hit us up on the bomb hole asking, like, how does this whole hood thing work? Because we're always talking about it. So I guess it'll just depend on when things get back to normal or whatever happens. Yeah. Or, I mean, like, they could still try to get a job. They just you know, gotta show up they just gotta and meet show the right up. people, right? Yeah, That's work at you could work for Timberline or yeah. something, if nothing else. True, huh? That'll get yeah. you in there. Get but it's lift. probably not as loose as yeah. that. But true. So at one point you're riding jumps, you're hiking, you're doing contests, and then you is that around the time? Correct me if I'm wrong. Where you switched to like too hard and jetpack or? Yeah, it was. Uh, so I tried because I so I have dual citizenship for the Philippines, and they reached out, and they were like, do you want to try to go to the Olympics for us? Really? Yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, sure, why not? Let's give this a good old college try. That's and, cool. And so I, I tried, but then didn't have the points. And then that was around the time where I moved out here. So I was, I can't even remember the dates anymore, but 2014, maybe? Yeah. And... Like, we had, I had met, you know, all the girls at camp because it's, like, very few women worked at camp. And so when you did meet somebody, it's, like, you're more more likely to be friends with them. Yeah, kind of have a quick relationship. Yeah, and, like, you really, like, bonded with these people that you're spending the summer with. Yep. And, yeah, they all convinced me to come out to Salt Lake. And then, so after, yeah, it was 2014, Winter Olympics, right? Sochi. Mm-hmm. So I didn't make it. And then, yeah, uh, Too Hard was happening at the time. And then I filmed with Isabella and my friend Danica. And I think Laura was also, like, one of the – and Madison were, like, the first people that really, like, took me out to, like, do street – And you had never spot. really done street? No. <laughs> I think the first – I didn't really understand what street – was exactly like I knew Desiree was out in the videos like doing it and I knew that it was a thing but I didn't know that you could make a video part and like be a snowboarder that way and make money that way that's cool so um I think yeah the first time I hit a like a rail was in Big Bear nice yeah and which one um it's that I think the JP Walker one it's the wooden one it's frontside for me Okay. It's at it's a house. Okay, I know what you're talking about. Sick. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That was the first, like, I think Melissa Evans took me there and was like, all right, here's a here's a wooden rail. And I was like, okay, let me try to jump onto this thing. <laughs> and then did it. And I was like, okay, that was fun. Yeah, <laughs> and that's then, incredible. Start. And then didn't really revisit it until I moved out here. I can't believe you almost went to the Olympics. I never knew this. That's great. <laughs> that's a fun little fact. Yeah. It what, was at what age were you like I want to be a pro snowboarder? Um I think I was I was 16. 16. Yeah, cuz at at that point I had started doing contests and then like that was the time when you were getting checks for Burton Ams like a grand I yeah. think for first place. So, so you, you were like there's a possibility here. This yeah, is cool. Yeah. I was like making money that way. I was like, you know, 16 years old with a grand that's a lot of money when you're <laughs> yeah 16. when you're 16 that's i was washing dishes it took a lot of dishes yeah so it, it it was just like okay i i could do this yeah so i was a hydro ceramic technician not a dishwasher <laughs> anyway that I was like just that. me <laughs> oh that's awesome so then when did you start filming so did, there's the rail and bear and then you moved to utah and you're with utah. You're with um, Isabella. What was the crew? Lo- is that jet- it? Was like jet? It was jetpack. Jet 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 yeah, pack. it was Sick. essentially like the precursor to jetpack, but like we didn't really know what we were doing, and it was already late. It was like mid- it was like February, and then I was like, we were like, let's go hit start. some street rails and try to start <laughs> doing this. Were you passing a camera around, or yeah. did you have a filmer? Oh passing? yeah, we were passing a camera around, and like it, it was pretty much like clips to go into. To go into too hard, like we we're gonna send them to too hard. Oh, cool! And then, um, yeah, we—I mean, I, I didn't really. 
film anything. I think we I made like a small video of yeah, us. Yeah, starting in February and <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's cool though. But it was it was that time when I think it, Michigan had a lot of snow. And so we went out there just to take a stab at it. That's awesome. So who were your first sponsors? Uh, ever? Yeah, like I guess as you as you started, like who kind of put you on? Um, I was getting flow from Forum back in the day. Damn. Yeah, Forum and Special Blend. That's cool. So that was really cool. Rep flow. Rep flow. Cool. Yeah, yeah. and then um, all of the buying happened, and then Forum mm. kibosh, and then it was kind of like I'm just here. <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> and then I ended up getting some, yeah, a couple board sponsors. And then started when we started doing Jetpack, we got some funding from That's said cool. board companies. Nice. <laughs> well, so if we're talking video parts, I think it's time we oh, get yeah. into. We, gotta, we usually break right into this. You know. Kind of breaks the ice. Oh, this is what kinda, I've been so yeah, nervous about. She's been a little nervous. Her roommates are pretty serious. <laughs> like, yeah, you live in a house. And a house of learned doctors, you could say, as yeah. far as uh, snowboard knowledge. Who's in Who's in your guys' uh In our house? boat. Uh, it's uh, so me and Ted, and then. Ted Borland. Jeff Pulse. Shouts. Nick yeah. Pawlowski. Get um, you gave him Birdman. I gave him Bird. <laughs> I'm on the wrong soundboard. So, so we got Pops. Pops, Jeff Holes, Phil Hansen. You got a crew in that rush. I bet they'll know both of the answers to this. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And if she doesn't get it right, I'm sure she's going to. I'm going to get burned. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into it. Good luck. Uh, that's presented by the Do Tour. Great event. I'm sure you competed in a couple of Do Tours back in the day. Oh, yeah. So, you know. Gatorade Free, free Flow Tours. Oh, yeah. Oh, well. yeah. Um, okay. Well, Godspeed. Um, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> That's Ted's part, isn't it? Close. Oh, oh my gosh, it's Brandon Reese. It's, I'll say this. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, you're on your third. <laughs> oh, no. It's, Give her a it's the same crew, and it's a different gender of person. Oh, it's Desiree. Yes, it is. No, you oh. shouldn't have given that to me. Yeah, I got you know too excited. What, well, <laughs> I was is, like, I know this they, one. They all sound the same. <laughs> They're all similar songs. We're still giving you a prize pack for third oh, try. All, they Thanks. all sound the same. <laughs> well, they, the, all their songs are kind of that same genre. Yeah, so yeah. I, I'll, I'll go easy on you on that. That's a cooler from Igloo Coolers. Thank you. Custom bomb little hole. Custom bomb Look at that little wrap on there. So are you going to catch some heat? It's uh, Oh, probably. Because you threw out Ted. <laughs> I, I got too excited. I was like, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> that, I should have done Ted. Yeah, that would have been you know good. what though? She would nail that. What if it resulted in like oh, you know, yeah. I, you know, like maybe full on drama? Yeah, we get we get a whole Ted, situation. Like, Ted's going to sleep in the car. Or something. I can't believe no. you didn't remember my video I part. Believe this. this. No, this will never, ever be resolved. That happened kind of where <laughs> not no, you didn't do that, but um, we were in Canada at the bread rail, and I this was during the Veer years, and, Veer year, and. Um, like a tongue twister. Yeah, that's a tongue twister. Here, here. But we we went to the bread rail, and I did um, like board slide, uh, dead lung. Yep. Out. Nice. And I was like so stoked. I was like, oh, I, I figured something out. And then someone was like, or I was texting Ted, and he was like, I did that trick in during Pepper. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> I That's didn't remember. Pretty rare husband wife drama. Yeah, right that is. There. <laughs> ABD. Yeah, already, already been done, done that. I did that. I was like, I, I was like, I'm so shitty. I didn't even remember. I didn't even <laughs> remember that clip. <laughs> and then I later find out that it wasn't even used. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, I'd love to hear that the is, call in a domestic dispute over yeah. an ABD at a spot. ABD <laughs> at a spot, full on domestic. <laughs> Got to call in the right, well, professionals. We're, we're still oh, yeah, in name that in, video part. Still in name. So this is for the uh, viewer, listener. Yep. You guys know the drill by now. Comment on Instagram if you know this one. Short. You don't answer that one. It's short. <laughs> okay, thank you guys for playing another round of 
Name that video part. You know, we were talking about Ted. He's your husband. You guys recently got married, which congratulations. Fun wedding. Thank you. One thing that I'm curious about, um, did you change your last name? Are you keeping the name? Um, Is this an all right question? Yeah, that's yeah, totally fine. I figured fun. it would be. No, I, I, I did change my name. You did, But legally. I use Ortona. Yeah, legally. Yeah. But I use Ortonia's. Is yeah. your shred name. Yeah. Just kind of tight to have. professional name. I think that's a cool, a good move, you know, because it's... Like a rapper name. Yeah. But it's your original name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's kind of nice to have it separated it's like at little times. Baby. Yeah. They're like little baby. It's like a little baby. You know? He's not going to change his name. Yeah. No, but I think you might a good idea. change it. You know? Because sometimes if you're at the border, you don't want people to know all about you. They look up Borland, and, you know, they won't find a, your, your secret shred career or True. something. True that. That's why I run East Town. I don't want people knowing what's up with me. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. So <laughs> always got his alias. Aliases, man. Uh, I wanted to talk about a little thing called Soy Sauce Nation. You want to tell the people what that's all about? Yeah, you know, I see a sticker over over your shoulder there on your board. Yeah. Um. So it's a it's like a com- it's a community thing. Like we it w- actually started off as a joke, a little bit of a joke, um, at High Cascade. My very first year, um, we were all going around the room. Everyone's introducing themselves. Like People tell stories, whatever. And uh, this guy gets up there, tells a story. It's funny. And then he said, oh, well, my name is AK. And a lot of people are like, oh, does that stand for Asian kid? <laughs> and then and, you know, it's funny, and everyone laughs. And he s- later closed with, being the only Asian person there <laughs> at the at the meeting, and I I remember like someone was sitting in front of me. I like did this behind them and locked eyes with him, and I was like, <laughs> "You're like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> what about me? Yeah, what's going on here?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, but we ended up becoming like really good friends, mm-hmm. and just uh, ended up sharing stories about like how we got there and like how we got into snowboarding and just like the overall feelings of like re- thinking you're the only one doing something like like snowboarding or anything re- um, related to that like skateboarding mm-hmm. and like having that connection and being able to share that was huge so, um but yeah we made a so we made an instagram and started showcasing people who were Asian on it who did snowboarding and skateboarding and then p- people started catching on hitting us up being like sending what, videos it, what is this what is this yeah yeah and and we we're like oh it, like it started making stickers and they're like how do I get one and we only had so many of them but it uh, escalated into um, being so much more than that where you could meet somebody through the ins- through Instagram and then be like, oh, I live out in Colorado, or I live out in Salt Lake. Like, come and crash at my house anytime if you want to go snowboard. That's or cool. Skate. So it really is a community. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So so that was kind of how it started. You no, know, Bridges always talks about um, it's kind of hard for Asians to really elevate to the level of like American pros. They got to work hard at it. So they got to go bigger. That's what they teach the Japanese in the half fight, right? They have to there's go bigger a, than the Americans. Well, there's or just like a that. lot oh, of it. amazing riders. Yeah. Even now, China is such a giant market. Japan's always been a huge market, but they don't really get the love in the pro world. Now that Japan's really starting to step it up, but yeah. so it's cool that you're doing that. It's really cool you're bringing people together and. Yeah, that was how we like how we started. Um, yeah. Just bringing people together, and that's yeah. well, that's what it was all about. And like making stickers and sending them to people has been fun. And how yeah. long have you been doing it? Uh, AK, Sorry, you so oh, AK is the one who makes all the stickers and like makes the designs. And like we talk to designers that are Asian in the industry, and the, um, we've been doing it since that first year at High Cascade, right. pretty much. Yeah, I think we made stickers later that summer. Yeah, that's incredible. And I think there's something really special about having a degree of relatability when you're a minority, right? In in a, in a sense of like, this is, it's totally different, but you know, like with AA, I'm sober, I don't drink, right? So then 
when you're by when you don't have a community, you maybe feel isolated or alone, or you don't have anybody to talk to about like similar struggles. It's different. I'm not trying to compare it to being a- Asian, but the, I, there's something really powerful in that degree of relatability, right? And being able to talk about similar things like that and just communities in general, and, right? Yeah, because cool. it it was definitely um, just like coming coming together and then just realizing that you were, you were into snowboarding and then having, yeah, like a community or some people who look like you, yeah. which, which I didn't understand until being an adult was a thing. Like I didn't understand that people needed, need other people to, that look like them to believe that they can do those things. That makes sense. And because it's like, I had my family and it's like, oh, my mom and dad is doing this thing. Like, I'm going to do this thing. And it gave me the confidence to be like, I'm going to do this thing. Whereas, like, let's say you get into it on your own. And it's like, you're a minority. And you don't see it in the, any of the ads. Or, like, you're, you love snowboarding or skateboarding. And you don't see anybody that looks like you. And you're like, can I do this? Yeah. Like. And let's say, like, the lineage of your family, there's no snow from yeah. there. So you're thinking to yourself, like, all right. Who's doing it? Yeah, and I, I didn't realize that until until later on, and we started Soy Sauce Nation, and I'll look through the DMs, and, a, like, a mom or dad will, like, send a message and be like, this is so cool that you guys are doing this, and it gives my kids somebody to look at to, like, continue riding park or continue doing, like, riding powder or what, full what have full-on inspiration. You. And I was like, because sometimes, <laughs> especially in the past couple of years, I'm just like, why am I, why am I doing this? Like, like, why am I putting my body on the line? But and it's gnarly. Yeah. yeah. But then I get like messages or read messages like that, and I'm like, okay, I gotta like take this space up and keep going. It's a culture. It's That's community. It's cool. Big inspo. And then you take the fact that you're a woman already a minority. Mm-hmm. Then you take Asian woman. This it's double. So it's it's cool. And what are the what do you think about the strides like? that need to be taken in order f- to kind of tip the scales in the right direction? Do you feel like there, do you feel like snowboarding's got a long way to go? And in terms of, uh, gen- maybe let's start with gender, gender that, that I think, um, snowboarding companies as an industry are incrementally getting better. I think now more than ever, they're trying to make a push yep. for women in snowboarding and, and you could see it out. Like, through it, like, people might hate on Instagram, but you look up Instagram, and there's so many, like, women snowboarders out there doing their thing. And it's like, maybe they got into snowboarding because they saw that on, on Instagram. But, yeah, I think that there there's so many more females out there doing, like, doing it and just trying to get after it. More than, like, definitely more than when I started. Yeah. Yeah. Like, when I started, it was just, like, me and then, like, older girls. You could, like, count them on your hands. Yeah, kind of, like, crewed up. (laughs) Southern California is a little different, though, because we we did have, like, quite a few people to look up to that were around at the the time. Um, But, yeah, like, now more than ever, I'd say there's, like, there's, like, more crews now instead of being the only girl on the mountain. Definitely feels like it's getting more uh, accepted, mm-hmm. and, and you guys are laying the groundwork for the next generation of girls and just keeps growing and growing. Like you go to the skate park, there used to be no girls. And I know snowboarding's different, but it's almost 50 50 some of the times. Really? When I go to 9th and 9th, I was there the other day, it was like half and half. It was just that's like, cool. That's, that's a nice. huge deal. And, and I think snowboarding's only, you know, not too far behind, hopefully, in that department. And, and then you know that the whole that helps everybody mm-hmm. that brings the whole industry up, right? So I don't know. So I was talking to your husband Ted, and he kind of mentioned how it's interesting how you've kind of worked with all crews, and you've been on all girl crew, and you've almost been on an all guy crew except for yourself because you're with Ted and everybody. Lately, maybe this season a little bit if Jill wasn't around or Des, and then you've also been on a full mixed crew. What do you think is, like, your your favorite setup? My favorite setup? Like, your favorite way to do it, I guess. I think 
I think all have, I think they both have their pros and cons. Yeah. And, um, like filming with an all girl crew when, when I was first starting to do filming, it was, it was so dope. Like the first year that we started Jetpack, like that was some of the best filming and best times like I've ever had. And, and it was like, you're out there, we were out there learning how to film, learning how to film a video part and like doing it with your friends. You guys all pulling bungee and stuff too? And um, we had a winch, nice. but we did have a bungee you too. Did. Yeah. But and yeah, it's not an easy day. No. Yeah. All in those things around. It's like a construction crew. Yeah. yeah. It, so we, so the crew was at the time we went from filming at high cascade and then we sort of went into that year being like, we're going to make webisodes and we're going to try to film street too. So it was like ambitious, pretty ambitious yeah. because a lot, that's like another thing is a lot of people don't realize that if you're going to make a webisode and or like a series, it takes a lot of work and it cuts out time. If you want to film also film a video part. Oh, True. Doing both at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, gnarly. So we were like, let's, do it all and we all got into amanda's truck and drove drove east because that was that one year that boston had oh the mega storm mega storm snowmageddon Snow snowmageddon that's what it was called officially yeah i think so yeah that's something i think like it was that. too it was wild and did you say you even had uh mary shooting photos yeah yeah so so the crew was full female crew full female crew no boys allowed no boys allowed <laughs> <laughs> get the fuck out of there no but we were we liked to snowboard with guys as well yeah of course yeah so we were doing that like they were included in the summer stuff that we were making yeah and and the webisodes that was also another thing was even though it was all girls, like, at the core, we still went out and snowboarded with guys. and like, Get some cameos. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what we wanted to show was just – because at the time it was, like, kind of like what you were saying where there's one girl in one thing or, like, in this thing, and then you have, like, one girl in this thing, and then, like, maybe sprinkle some of them in this one movie, and they only have, like, a few clips. Yeah. And so, and at the time, it was like, okay, there's too hard, and then, like, we're not really, that's, like, not really us. Not your like, style. Not really say. our style, so, like, let's make make it the way we want to see it out there in the world. Mm -hmm. So, got in the car, no experience, really, and, yeah, we just started doing it, and just, like, use the resources that we had. So, it's, like, everyone that we met from High Cascade, or, like, some a friend of a friend, we'd be, like hey, can we crash at your house? Or like, hey, how do we get tickets to the resort? And um, Or like, hey, where's this spot? Yeah. Like, that's another thing that, like, maybe people, in, like, filming in general, they don't under might not understand is, like, when you're watching a movie and you know, have an idea of where that spot is, you could probably call your homie up and be like, where's this at? Yeah, especially when you're out of town like that. Yeah. People are really cool. They're hyped you're there. Yeah, totally. You know, like, it's, that was something that we learned was, like, let's use the resources that we have. Like, let's call up the people that we know and, like, figure out where these things are and try to go hit it. Yeah. <laughs> so. Did you ever have any, like, police roll up and see you're an all-girl crew and be like, whoa, what's oh, we, going on? We for sure got, like, 100% got away with a lot of things oh really because like, they were like oh, okay girls just because <laughs> fun. yeah or they would just be like oh they're they're not they're fine yeah they're not gonna be they're not ruining anything ruining they're anything these nice girls it's <laughs> true yeah that's tight <laughs> like like oh you don't you're all like five foot two like <laughs> no attitude like yeah. the guys what? might throw at them yeah yeah they're like you're you're good <laughs> genius we could start maybe playing that Wear Just wigs or something and <laughs> no. see if we can get away with it. Because I get problems with the police, as you know. Yeah, so but Buds, you know, you, I'll tell you, you would have brought Buds with you. You would have had problems. So. <laughs> problems you would have right had away. whole crew in jail for the weekend, probably. <laughs> <laughs> and you get a ticket. <laughs> you get a ticket. <laughs> now you, were, you know how it goes. Uh, you know, the thing that's cool about the all-girls crew, you know, like you said, it was back in the day people looking up to you had you know one video with hannah beeman one you know she's in the grenade video or you have terikitas is in amped but they're not jetta mines here there's full moon but there's not there's not like a a broad 
like there's it's like you don't know you can it's a thing really right so it's kind of cool to pave the way and be like yeah we're gonna we're gonna make an all girls film and now the girls that are below you that are younger coming up the women I should say the women coming up are gonna see that and be like oh we can make our own video because we saw that it's inspired just, yeah inspire you inspire the next wave do it, I want to cool. give it a try. Which is cool. It's inspiring. You, you get, you get a, some good messages from the girls coming up, and yeah, I I recently spent some time um, with a younger girl, and like her name's Isabella Gomez, and she was doing the shoot with us, and she was kind of like, she this was, is at Hood last. This week. was at Hood like a Sick. couple weeks ago, couple weeks ago. And, and she was telling, which was such a dope experience. Like Danny Cass was, we were shooting him too, so I was just like, what? Yeah, that's sick. <laughs> but um, he. She was, like, telling me how it was cool to watch, like, that when they came out, which I, I had no idea that it was going to make, s- like, we didn't know that was going to make such a big impact or, like, people would be into it or anything like that. That's really cool. Yeah, you have no idea while you're doing it, and then all of a sudden you hear something like that, and you're like, wow. Like, okay. years later, and yeah, I was years like, oh, later. okay, <laughs> sick. And that means it affected a whole bunch of women, so that's really cool. Makes like it all. That. It makes it all worth yeah, it. Yeah, it makes it worth it. I think Definitely. when you can do that, probably wasn't easy either. No, we didn't. We honestly, we had very little sponsor money, and we used that to kind of pay for everything. Like we, that's what paid for gas, or that's what would pay for whatever, as like the whole group, and like on and Amanda like put up a lot of her own money to make that happen. Wow. Yeah. So we like, talking like you all cram in one room like the boys do. Oh yeah, yeah same style. Right? Yeah, That's yeah. We so stayed. Cool. We stayed at uh, Davy's house. Zags. Oh sick. Yeah, yes. we stayed. Shout out to his parents. Oh, right. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Wrong sound bite. <laughs> right with his parents too. That's so rad. Yeah, we just we posted up in Littleton and stayed in the Stags basement for just like, like months. <laughs> he's like to his parents, the girls are coming through. Yeah. They let you stay there that long. They let us stay there that long. They probably loved you guys. It That's was so cool. They we like helped them shovel the shovel their driveway. Their driveway <laughs> and the roof and it, During yeah. Snowmageddon, that's probably a good asset to have a shoveling team. Yeah, it was Women profe- shoveling team. professional shovelers. That's what we do. <laughs> yeah, so that's- let's let's go mixed cruise. What's that like? Mixed cruise is also sick. Like I so I got to film Veer with um, Jesse Paul, and it was like a small crew. So it was Melissa and I, and then Tony Wagner, Mike Little, and J- Jordan Smalls. I thought you and Melissa killed killed that. Thanks. Very impressed when I saw that. You got, we went into that year not knowing what the hell we were doing. We were like, I like snowboarding with you. I like snowboarding with you too. Like let's let's go snowboarding together and make video part. <laughs> kind of like step brothers or something. Did we just become best friends? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> step brother situation. That's, yeah, that's awesome. So yeah, because we we made um, I'd made like a small video the year before with Melissa and Madison and Jackie Lammer as well. What was that called? It was uh, Flora. So oh. it's it's small. Awesome. But we yeah we snowboarded into that next year and then one day we were in Quebec and Jesse called me and was like do you guys want to join us and like be in our movie and I was like hell yeah like we don't have we don't know what we're doing like we have no plan right now like we don't have a filmer we're just kind of we were our idea was like to just try to team up with whoever was around and, and was down to film with us but like yeah so was that Jesse's idea? Yeah, that's good on Jesse. Yeah, you. that's yeah. We dope. were we were at uh, the Sugarbush Projects project uh, crushes event, and mm. um, he was, we were all staying at the Solomon House, and I brought Melissa with me. I was like, "You're just gonna stay with us," and just talking to Jesse about it, how we like didn't really have a plan, but we were gonna we were filming already, and um, yeah. And so kind of, like, maybe put that into his ear. Like, yeah. we're just doing it. And then he was just like, why don't you just do it with, like, our crew? So that was really cool. And it worked out. And it worked out. And yeah. we went out to Minnesota, and it was, like, probably the one of the best trips I've ever had. And just, like, having a mixed crew, you have the dynamic of, like, the guys are there, and they're 
like the guys we were with were awesome. They're so supportive and like down to help us try to get whatever we needed done. And like, it all came around. Like we'd shovel up for them and like stand out in the cold and do all that for each other. That's like the, the group thing. Like, yeah. It's what it's all about. Really. Like, it sounds crazy, but like, Oh, I'm going to stand out in this like polar vortex. Just Minnesota. Be- <laughs> like, because we want to. Yeah. yeah. Forget about that. Sitting in this warm boost in the middle of yeah. summer that like, you know, you, end up standing in a icy field for There's hours some moments man. while joe sexton tries a balancing beam for nine hours yeah and Maybe doesn't three get it days in a row too and you're like i love this yeah your fingers are falling <laughs> off and you just want to go back to your airbnb and you're just like oh my gosh heated boots key Oh, that. that's what you run? Heated I boots? run heated boots. Oh, that's a pro tip. Pro tip. Yeah. That's a heated boots. I don't heated believe boots. I don't run that as a photographer. That's insane. As, as a photographer? Photographer. <laughs> Do I always say photographer? <laughs> <laughs> I just like to. I just like to. Whether you do or don't, it's fun. You just throw it out there. Yeah, you got me tripping. If I actually say you it, you should not. just go fall, I'm all in. Just start all spelling in. it that way too. F E R E Stone photography. Photography. Why not? I'm gonna veer off subject right now, but I, I was thinking that was about the name of the movie. We're gonna, no pun intended. Yeah. But we're talking about snowboarding. The intricacies of like spots, yeah. video parts. I could tell you where most down bars are in any any kink rail in any major city we've been to. I could probably get you there. Um, song video parts, uh, tricks that people did on random railings in parks. I got them all cataloged up here. Insane. It, and it's useless knowledge, but it's great for the podcast. Yeah, I never really thought is. I never thought I would actually have any type of use for this. I was like, imagine if I went to school and I used this knowledge for something and filled it with something else. But the, it works great. We're pro- talking about rail professor over yeah, here yeah, at, at no, a Hogwarts spot, or whatever. Spot, spot professor. professor. You're like, spot God. <laughs> You're just in there. I can tell you any location off the top of my head. Yeah, it's, it's longitude, it's, latitude. latitude. Jeff Hulse, Jeff <laughs> Hulse is a uh, spot guru as well. Oh yeah, he's got. Spots, and and I feel like he he'll hold out too. Like he won't tell you. Oh, oh yeah, he, he holds yeah, out on you. Yeah, no, he didn't hold out on me. Like he was. He'll let you in your roomie. He it was he always it was awesome. Like snowboarding with him. Like this year, like he would always be like, Yo, Nerf, what do you think about this spot? Like, would you want to do this? And I'd be like, Yeah, sure, or nah. But he always had he always had everyone in mind. Like, oh, I think so and so would like this spot probably. And then towards the end of the year, he would be like, well, I've got this spot. Like, we should go to it. And we're like, where has this been? Like, where has this been this whole time? He's, like, waiting till he's healthy and he's on the show. S- everything's good. You think he's a, a spot hoarder at times, did you yeah, say? Yeah, that's kind of spot hoarding. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, after uh, Buzz Cut came out, I was really hoping he was going to go bowl cut. And <laughs> just, just put out the sickest, Sick, sickest graphic. edit. Yeah. Maybe he still could. Well, we're talking the new movie. Yeah, Tangle. What's Tangle. Tangle. Uh, you word said the, it. What are the word on the streets, dude? Here's my big question about Tangle. What is it like working with your husband at Spots? At Spots. Is that pretty insane? And like, you know, sometimes you don't want to work with your spouse. But I, you guys get along out there, and I yeah. mean, it always seems like you do to me. He actually seems like he pushes you in the right way. Like, knows what you're capable of. He seems of. supportive. Yeah. Very supportive. But he also, like, just knows what you can do, knows just how to get you to get that shot. Totally. And it's awesome. Do you think that helps you out and all that? I, I, I definitely think it, it helps me out. Like, uh, so we, um, a couple of years ago, did the falling leaf think thing thing. Oh, yeah, that's right. And so that's where Flora was and all that. But we, so we worked together then as well. And that's, like, us traveling. And that's when sometimes I would be the only girl on the crew and, um, and like, we worked out fine. Yeah. So we kind of went into the year being like, well, we've done this before. I don't see why it would be a problem. But he did forewarn me. He was like, you're going to get treated just like everybody else. Where kinda like, has to. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I was like, that is total, duh, like, of course. But he's like, no, no, like, I'm going to try, I'm going to push you the way I push everyone else. Like, you might... He didn't say you might not like me at times, but it was basically like, yeah. this might happen where, like, I don't like you right now. And that totally, that did happen at times. Where you you like, try, try, not to, try not to take it home. Yeah. <laughs> just like any working relationship with a spouse, I guess. Yeah. 
I'd say I've gotten arguments over colors of the paint on the fence. Yeah. I can imagine if somebody was telling me to do a, a backlip a pretzel instead for. of a backlip. He pushes her out there, too. <laughs> I, no, there's times where I'm just like, I'd just be like, nope, I'm not yeah. doing this. I've like, seen you kind of be like, dude, I'm like, you were kind of scared. Like, he's pushing you too hard, maybe. Yeah, so, and, like, that definitely happened. But, yeah. I mean, we got, we got, like, anything else, like, we got through it. and Only but, makes you stronger, right? Yeah. <laughs> But there was definitely times where I was just like, no. But then Des would come in and be like, you should do it like this. And I'll be like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And you guys, like, actually went on a honeymoon trip, which was awesome, too. Oh, yeah. Honeymoon film trip. Yep. That's pretty dope. That was, uh, we went to Japan. Great. And it was Great place my, to go. My all, pretty much all of our first times oh. in Japan. So, um, and it was insane. Like, or, It was wild. Like... I have never been to a country like that. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And it's like everyone tells you like, oh, it's going to be this or you're going to see that and it's going to be awesome. And and when you get there, it's like a hundred times better. Even more amazing Even more than amazing. anyone tells you. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. And that was not this past season, but I thought I'd just yeah, no, kind of pivot no, I thought it was interesting, you know. Yeah, powder honeymoon. Powder missions. honeymoon. I mean, we, honeymoon. That could be a new thing. That's we cool. We didn't. We didn't ride any powder. Oh. Oh, this, oh, it was. Street. Where did you guys go in Japan? We went to the main island. Nagano. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Like not Nagano. You can drive it so many hours back and forth, different directions. Yeah. On so that main island. We just stayed on the main island and just rode. Um. It was more like a jib trip. We wanted to go and do powder, but bad winter or something, huh? I think it was just. The like just the dynamic mm -hmm. where like jibbing was more important at the time for the movie for the movie yeah yeah now I will say the word on the streets the strats That's what I was gonna get to yeah you got a heater coming out this year a lot of people it's talking. what I keep hearing a lot the, the of people are talking. talking we hear the streets talk. That's why we were like, we gotta the get, they said we got to get Nirvana on the show she's sitting on some heat for Tangle yeah how do you feel about that it's I feel very um. I'm, uh, what's the word? Not shocked, but, like, it warms my heart that people <laughs> say that <laughs> about it. Because it, it was, it's the most footage I've ever had. And it was definitely a, sh not a struggle. It was a struggle for me. It should be, probably. Definitely. Like, this year was, was tough snowboarding for me. Like, uh, I'm mentally I had to, like, get in a space where I was like, I can do this. But then by the end, just be like kind of bummed on what I had done. But then when I hear people say s things like that. I've heard it a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. It's and you know, LeBlanc once said, the second you're fully satisfied, you should probably just throw in the towel. <laughs> you always got more to work towards next season, you know? So you, if you walk away, just like, that was the best part of my life. That was my purple tape, as Raekwon might say. I don't know if you're familiar with that reference. But... I don't think I, <laughs> that like, was that was like his his best uh, album, and uh, so if it was your best video part, you're never gonna film a better one. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's always good to walk away, maybe wanting more, feeling like you could have done more. And yeah, I feel that way. I felt that way every year. That's it was good. just like yeah, it keeps you going. Like I That's should why have done building. more. I wanted to do more, but this year, yeah, it was. I'm proud that I that I filmed as much as I did, but I'm definite. I was definitely like. Cha mentally challenging. Did you come into it? You know, you you're, you had your best year yet. You should say keyword yet. Did you have any different approach going in, or did you just just happen to grind it out harder? Or what was the mentality? Different approach. Uh, like, well, like sometimes people are like, "I'm gonna do it this year." Part. You know, yeah. like I've done that. I've been like, "I'm going for Ender," or um, "I'm gonna." This is my year to go all in. I don't know if you'd... Yeah, I definitely went into this year being like, this is, I got to go all in. Like, I got to, like, I've done everything I can to get to, like, this moment, pretty much, or, like, this point in my career. Mm -hmm. And, like, a, like, I quit my job at, that I had at the time, like, go, back in December, like, going into the year and just being like, I'm doing this. So that type of mentality was good because then I was able to you know, film and focus on that. But then at the same time, I think it, I might have taken it a little too far where I was just, like, being too hard on myself, maybe. Like, like it's tough. You can be your own worst critic, you know, obviously. Sometimes it, 
That's what it takes to get the result. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. you know. How many shots we talk it on the clipboard for I you? I don't. I, d- I don't count. You don't. Well, no. She's not a do. counter. Some I mean. people have a log. Some people just do this. I don't know. What do you do? Uh, I film the clip off the LCD oh, screen yeah. of the so camera, always, and I edit my part on iMovie on my phone. <laughs> So I know exactly how much footage editor. I have. The editor hates it. I hate my footage. And <laughs> uh, don't it recommend much, it. <laughs> you start to hate it, right? Absolutely don't recommend that technique. I definitely write it all down, though. So you know what tricks, right? Mm-hmm. I, so in, in, when I go into the year, I like, and I think this is important. Like, So I have it in my notes, and I write down what I want it to look like. Like, what do I want my video part to look like? That's cool, like visually. Yeah, like tricks. Or like maybe if there's a certain spot that might that a I vibe see even. like a vibe yeah like a vibe like what do we what do I want it to look like so I'll write it write down the things that I want to do, and then throughout the year I'll, you know we'll go to a spot and I'll be like oh like this seems like a good place to do this, and then if I do it check, and if I don't find the next spot. So, I think it's methodical i think people should think about it because if you if you don't go in having a plan then you'll end up with not enough clips or less than what you wanted to accomplish 100 percent. and a lot of people have an organic approach where they say oh i'm just gonna let everything happen naturally works for a minority of the people very rare naturally talented people can do that but when you have the trick list i found that you know, watching people like Bodie Merrill, Scott Stevens, Ted, they've all had these trick lists. And when you have the idea of what tricks you want to do, I find that the spot appears. You know what I mean? Like if you're like, oh, I want to do a Miller flip to front board. And that's the trick. All of a sudden, you'll you'll, you'll you kind of like, them. yeah, because you're, you're looking for it. And you might just be driving. If you don't have that list, you're like, I don't know what I got for this spot, this spot or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. I think that's really cool. That's important for kids to hear that you have a trick list. I, I like know. how you have the vibe, too, and almost an art- artistic approach on top of a trick list and all that. That's cool. Yeah, it's like. And you got Ted being like, you already got that trick. <laughs> I can just imagine. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll be like, you, you already got that. You have he to do probably has his else. own list written down. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, you. I mean, you watch videos you watch people and then it's like oh well who do you like watching and how do do you want to look like them like yeah let's look try it let's try to look like them or try to like do like what kind of spots are they hitting like let's try to find a spot that's similar to that and go do something that's cool who's the big who's big inspo and yes guys or girls or guy and girl i think i think both yeah yeah like like honestly desiree has always been somebody that i've really looked up to and watched her video parts and then for for guys it's just like I so I came in kind of watching videos later a little bit like I would you know borrow movies here and there but like didn't really absorb what was happening and then when I after High Cascade I started like really paying attention and so it's like watching keep the change and think think I was like yeah this is awesome and I watched video grass too back then. <laughs> nice. We almost forgot a uh, guest question. Oh. Good friend of yours, Melissa. Melissa Rotano. I she, love the guest questions you get going. We got a new little sector with the guest questions. We're going to hit you with Melissa's question. Here we go. What's up, Bumhole? What's up, Nirvana? This is Melissa. Um, I was going back and forth with Kelsey. We were trying to find a good question to ask you, but we decided on. What is your biggest pet peeve? I'm really excited to hear your episode. Hope you guys are having a great time in the booth. She's going pet peeve on them. Thank you, Melissa, for submitting that one. So I take it snowboarding pet peeves we're talking? I'm saying broad life or, just or life. snowboarding. Yeah, whatever. I, you know, Maybe both. It's a Maybe choose both. your own adventure. Choose yeah. your own adventure. Choose own or adventure. choose both adventures. <laughs> Melissa's so cute. Yeah, her voice. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> um, I would say... I think my biggest snowboarding pet peeve would be people who don't shovel. Oof. Yep. Well, you know what they get? You're fired. Canned. Yeah. I think that, um, especially in, like, a group aspect, or if you're snowboarding with people you don't know that well, I think it, or people you do know well, like, I think it's important 
to help and to shovel. Like, you're out there. Like, snowboarding is individual, right? But at the same time, to, like, get these clips and get these shots, or those are the same thing, but to get these clips, you you have a group that is helping you. And, like, that energy that you put into helping other people, like, should circul- circulate it's gonna come back, back it's karma, right? right? Like, I think that's super important, and I think, yeah, that's... Probably. Well, there's one person sitting at this table that's not particularly. I've good shoveled at more sho- snow than anyone <laughs> put together. All of you guys. That doesn't, that doesn't mean. That, I meant that in like snowboarders, but I mean it's. Dude, just, I'm gonna <laughs> queue up a link of the Bin Laden kicker. It's probably more snow than you've moved in your whole career. <laughs> Is that the one you built? It's the one that's bigger than my house. <laughs> Wait, the, uh, Bjorn? It's bigger than my house. Bjorn, the Bjorn, and, Dude, and Breezy. Is, like forty we foot were, tall wedge. By the eighth day of digging, we were. Fighting, we were oh, yelling. No. Shane got sun poisoning. There was like so, people laying down. Like <laughs> breezy was vibing everybody. Like oh my god. So he still got a lifetime the, worth of shoveling. And one at the kicker end and of the session is when they pulled Bin Laden out of the caves. So that's why we named <laughs> oh it the god. Bin Laden. Literally bigger than Chris's house. Dude, like okay. add another story on his house. That jump. <laughs> when Harry Hagen and Tanner Pendleton lived here, we were watching. That was an absence video. I remember <laughs> it was like the credits of somebody coming in. And like, it's their legs compressed or Bjorn. something. Bjorn. <laughs> and we were crying, tears coming down our face at how ridiculous that Dude. build was. And it was so big, Bob Plum and I were there because there was like, the more people we can get up here, the better. And then uh, I think Bjorn buckled, Breezy hit it twice, got a backside 180, session done. Oh my God. <laughs> Eight days of showing. Eight days, maybe 10. Like, it was the most miserable thing. But let me tell you something. He's life. moved about four scoops since then. Yeah, I mean, oh. after that, dude, that's like a lifetime achievement movement of snowboard. I got to be honest. Okay, okay, let's go for Choose Your Adventure Part 2. Biggest pet peeve in life. Yeah. We got any? Uh, in life. <laughs> that's hard. I. You're such a mellow person. <laughs> She's I like, know. I'm not really <laughs> bummed on that much stuff. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not super. I, like, don't. Nothing. You got to have some sort of pet not peeve. Nothing bums me out, but like, I feel like I, I don't get bummed out often. Um. Getting up at 5 a.m.? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'm not a morning person like that. Me neither. No. Jobs that require you to be there at 5 a.m. is a definite. Let's, let's yeah, go Chris with that. Chris wanted to record your episode at 5 a.m., and I was like, dude. <laughs> We're, not, not, we're not getting up that early this week. I said, hey, set your alarm at 4 a.m. Okay, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to, I got stuff to do today. I'm a morning person. Let's get everyone there for 5 a.m. <laughs> that would have been tight. You'll probably do that to me at some point. Um, I got a Patreon question, which is our Patreon people join up, support our cause, which is dope. Um, Alex is curious. Before you got sponsored, was it hard to find a good female board? Um, so I feel like Solomon makes some dope stuff. Yeah. But when you're kind of just out on the market, maybe you had a brand you liked, was it always, were they all making dope female boards, or was it a process kind of getting into it? Getting or? into it? I Well, back then, I wrote boys' boards. That's what I was going to say. A lot of girl, women, love mm-hmm. like to just grab the men's board. Like, I had, my, I think my first snowboard was a World Industries board with wow. the... Wow. Nice. That's it's like props. <laughs> We talking like MFM Pro model? No, it was just like a little kid board. Boy? It was a flame boy flame and the boy. water, what the yeah water person? Those wet, and, uh, oh, wet Willie. Yep. Yep. There we go. Yeah, they were shooting their elements at each other. I feel like that's a sick mountain high setup right there. <laughs> <laughs> Nerves with that mountain setup. high fat world industries. <laughs> yeah. yeah, flame boy, wet Willie. That it is was, dope. I think we got it like off of you know one of those web like budget websites that sells the yeah one board. of those like california yeah. hot skates yeah or yeah skates or something one yeah of those setups. It, <laughs> it was sick and so i wrote uh yeah i wrote boys boards forever and then when i did switch over to a girl's board i was like oh wow this is way easier really <laughs> why did I, was <laughs> why like, was like, i doing that <laughs> yeah i was only like you know 14 yeah makes sense time so all of a sudden the nose press is Deeper, way He's softer board, up. built for your weight, maybe. Wet Willie though was probably a kids board. So, what? Uh, T- Tanner Pendleton was that what, world industry? Was he? Yeah, he rode for him. Huh? Yeah, he had an ad. Had yeah, an t- ad. Sorry to interrupt you, bud. That's, That's props. Yeah. Well, my next question was, uh, how'd you get involved with Solomon? Um, Desiree actually, she's like my main plug. You know, like she, always, she's always had my back. Like she, after we filmed Jetpack, I was like kind of contemplating my life I I was like I need to go back to school I think I was 24 
at the time, and I was like, I need to go back to school. Like, I need to get my stuff figured out. Mm-hmm. And um, going into that year, we were trying to make another thing with Jetpack happen, and my sponsor at the time, they were like, oh, well, you're going to get the same amount of money and support as last year. Oh. And I was like, after after all this stuff that we did, like, and we're, we're going to s- start down, like, doing this again. Like, I, I want to be able to do more. And so I was kind of like, well, I I didn't say I quit. I basically quit and was like, I'm not doing this. Yeah. Like, it's I a love, lot of work. Yeah, I was like, I quit in, a ter- in the, the company. Like, not snowboarding. Yeah, yeah. But I was like, I can't, like, no. I'll figure it out. I'll just ride this board that I have. Like, a, I think I won something, like a board from... The loon from the loon contest. Last call. Last call. Nice. Yeah, we had gone to that, and I like got third or something. They gave me a board, and I was like, "Sick! I'm just gonna ride that and figure it out." Mm-hmm. And then I told Desiree, and she was like, "Oh, let me call Kevin." And then, pretty much from there, he was like, "Let's. I'll send you some boards. Like, we'll support the project that you want to do and see where that goes." So that was that's cool. How that happened. And then mm-hmm. if you and Dad's want to do something together, you can pull it off easier maybe and Well, it was really cool though because like like Chris and Bodie both like cuz they ask everyone, like Kevin asks everyone on the team like what they think and mm-hmm. and they had my back. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I heard he call. did <laughs> not down. I heard he did not vouch for you. <laughs> I was like, "Do <laughs> <Just> not kidding. <laughs> Whatever you do, do not. <laughs> I will quit. Don't no. do it." <laughs> no, we had your back. You're rip you're ripping still are ripping and and you see brands starting to slowly, it's a slow progression of people getting it, I think, as far as just the whole broader topic of gender and and realizing the importance of women having a sh- uh, uh, the right slice of the pie, you could say, or, mm-hmm. you know, getting a, getting a seat at the table, however you want to put it. Um, yeah, so it's good that Solomon's on, on the forefront of that. And, yeah. Thanks, you guys. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> do, no we're you, do you notice, Cheddar Bisque-wise, is women's is the world getting a little bit easier for for women coming up? Are you getting a bigger slice of the pie or mm. pushing harder or getting more development, like, involved with boards and, like, feeling more involved? And I feel uh, that's kind of – I don't really know how to answer that. Like, yeah. I think that it's slowly happening, and I, I do think that it does happen for, like – you know, handfuls of a handful of people, which is kind of how I guess life is, or which is how life is. And I feel like I'm, um, like I'm more involved in in a sense where, like I like I'm probably gonna do an event later. Like Melissa and I want to do like a ride day event for, for like, kind of like demoing. That's cool. Yeah, early se- like early season, all COVID depending, but like we want to get the women together so they have somebody to ride with or demo these boards to to see and meet people so it's like i have more involvement there but in terms of support it's i got sponsored into the i mean everything like i'm super grateful for everything that i've had but it's definitely like i'm older now and it's getting harder one well, yeah. smart they'll get involved business wise you know events like that's that's some big dog style you know yeah that that's that's something that like people don't might not necessarily talk about all the time. It's like I've always had a job and like then snowboarding. Mm. So it's like I've always had a job to get myself to the trips or like get myself through the winter and things like that. And it's and a lot of people that's like how it is for a lot of people too, but I um yeah. It's a game of passion. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's an it's definitely a lot of people struggling to make ends meet full passion project. And, uh, you know, you know, with Desiree, we were talking about this, um, a, a lot, a lot of the, a lot of, you could call it gender equality talk and, and moves in that right direction. So I was on SIA's website cause I just wanted to get the numbers like kind of dialed in. And I think it, it accounted women's sales account for 33%, which I'm a I've my, heard that as well. mathematician 30. That's one third. That's one third. It's some big math for me, <laughs> but um, but if you look at it, if you look at a woman's team, it's like it you you don't see for every 
three guys you don't see a girl for every six guys i'm generalization so so there still is definitely or i mean even or you can look at it from just a straight gender 50 50 equation that there's still room for improvement on all aspects whether it's you know in the contest and i think the contest splits are there but i don't know I just thought that was... I hear a lot of really brands being like, woman's the hot shit right now. That's where our biggest sales growth is going to come from. And I hear a lot of that talk, so maybe it'll start turning the tide. Yeah. We will see. Hopefully it doesn't all go to the men's pockets or the uh, probably the company people's pockets. But yeah. Yeah, hopefully we see that transition then to go to one-third. and That would be cool. Yeah. I th- definitely think that to elevate um, the people that they have is important. Yeah. And it's like to keep going because it, it's, yeah, well, the numbers like are that. that are that high. But then there's also the like, so this is a, just a thought. Yeah. But it's it's like okay, so you have one third, but then it's like, what about the talent aspect of it? It's like, are you going to put a girl on? Like, is it more detrimental in the end to put a girl on just because she's a girl, or because she's actually good at snowboarding? And, like, that's where I hit a, kind of a, a snag with it all. It's, like, you're, are you doing it just to do it? Or, like, is there meaning behind this? That's, that's a really good point. And you see some companies, I, I feel like, are doing it not because they want to and because they believe in it, almost for fear of getting lashed out at. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's not right. You got to do it, believe it, back it. Not, like, Support oh, we, we got to just check the box. Like, yeah. that's, not, that's not the right technique either, you yeah. know. So and and that goes for like minorities as well. Yes, true. And so it's like, are you just doing this to do this, or are do you actually want to do something about it? And it, the, what's the the main theme? Inclusivity too, in that and making sure that everybody's equally valued and accounted for and. And it's good that we're having these conversations and waking people up. And, um, you know, there's definitely a saturation of the white male in snowboarding. Mm-hmm. There's no, you look around, I mean, we're picking people for the podcast and you're like, okay, like out of a hundred people, <laughs> it's, you know what I mean? So yeah, where's the diversity? Where's the diversity? Yeah. yeah. So it's True. cool that people are thinking about it and, and, um, yeah. and whatnot. And you see more females getting involved or women, I should say getting involved and, and minorities getting involved and it's, just, and, and it's growing and you see younger people on Instagram, like snowboarding is cool. Skateboarding is cool. It, you, it, yeah. Fashion aspect of it. Fashion cool. aspect of it is crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so th- I think that gets people involved too. Yeah. And it, and it just broadens it all. Mm-hmm. And like more people are into it because of this. It's like, I can't remember what I was listening to, but it's, a, it's almost like the lifestyle of snowboard. Like we need to, get that involved into it of being somebody who's because you know snowboarding is a little bit different than skateboarding and surfing where it's like you have these groups of people that might not necessarily surf but they buy bikinis to hang out on the beach Mm -hmm. and that goes into you know the industry or you have people are into yeah, uh, skateboard brands, and they, so they buy that shirt, but they don't necessarily go skateboarding every day. And so I think with snowboarding, it's like how do we get people to be into it without that sort of lifestyle aspect? Well, or it's like it is a lifestyle, but it's like where's the puzzle? Yeah, but I piece? imagine if you're going up to Sundance for the film festival, you want to have a dope jacket, so. I guess that's starting, but they're not going to go buy a board if they don't shred, that's for sure. Yeah. At those prices. And, and then then circling back to what you were talking about, too, like it's almost like incorporating the lifestyle streetwear brand that embodies that of a snowboarder that's cool to, like, blur those lines of general public and snowboarder, like, you know, the person that, that wants to wear Volcom board shorts because they're surf shorts, because they kind of identify with surfing, kind of. But there's, yeah. they're dumping a ton of money. They live in, the in Ohio, industry. maybe. Yeah, <laughs> or whatever. But we don't have that in summer, which is, I never thought about that. Yeah, that's interesting. Does that thought come from your new line of work or what you're doing? Are you kind of involved with any of that stuff with dressing? Or is it, I don't, maybe I'm misconcepting. Uh, no, no, I, I think uh, that came from like a conversation I had with 
um, with AK, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sick. And um, a, her name's Dr. Geraldine Davis. She's She does inclusion on the slopes. So she um, is trying to get family, like, make the barrier to entry for families um, to get onto into skiing and snowboarding. Make it so it's not like a $20,000 trip yeah. to Vail. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> and much. And you can still pull it off. <laughs> yeah. So, so... I think it kind of stems, it definitely stemmed from that conversation that we had, but it's a good point because it's, yeah, the lifestyle of snowboarding, how do we sell that? And then um, circling back to like the industry for having inclusivity, it's like, so there's so, there's so few of the minority out there, right? So it's like, you have to, there's so few there, so why would you stop funding them or elevating them? Yes if you don't want to lose that. Totally. And there's there's definitely some factors playing into that with getting the even bigger. I mean, this is just a wormhole going down some of the, you know, socioeconomic <laughs> stuff. No, I like <laughs> it. I, I love talking I about this awesome stuff. Topic. But I was listening, I was looking looking at the, um, did you see Bill Nye, the science guy? <laughs> yes. The pigment, and he's like, yeah. in ra- and he's kind of squashes racism. And I thought about that, and I was like, this is, this is, like amazing and then if you actually think about so you know the way they break it down is it, the closer you are to the equator as like a continent you're darker your pigment in your skin and as you go north and south of, away from the equator you the pigments get well, whiter that's how it works yeah but yeah right the, that's how i interpret yeah, it sounds, yeah. sounds, so, so if, makes if you look at snowboarding geographically you're like in cold places northern places mm-hmm. you ever go to like northern finland it's the pastiest people you've ever seen in your life yeah. they don't get any sun Super blonde. and they're and they're you know and and i'm not saying that like but it, it makes sense to a degree why you know you take the geographic location of generally white people and then you take the barrier to entry with financially and you're basically the cards are stacked against having any people that aren't white you know and so it's that's like why we need to push more for minorities and everything you know different just just Mixing it up and snowboarding. Definitely. And that was uh, something um, with inclusion on the slopes. It was, um, she's black. Yeah. Dr. Davis is black. And she was like, I'm from the Midwest. And, like, I decided one day that I was going to go ski. And I was going to do that. And, like, to have that is is huge. And she, like, did the research. But then it's, like, kind of, like, where I where a lot of people run into it where it's like, well, where's the person who looks like me doing it? True. That's a good point. Never thought about that. And so, I don't know. Yeah, it could be a giant wormhole, but it's, yeah, the barrier to entry. There are people out there doing it, and she loves skiing, so it's it's not that we don't want, like, even though, like, I'm always cold. I, like, I'm, I'm always cold. <laughs> like, this you is. You got to shovel more, and you got to move around yeah, and enjoy to, it, and yeah, then you have, have a great time, and. And, and I think that, like, that even though I'm cold, like, I still want to be doing this. I'm having fun. Like, there's definitely other people, like, that would want to do this. And just because of the color of their skin, it doesn't mean they don't want to do that. Like, yeah. don't want to go snowboard or ski. So and My wife's pretty small, and her biggest thing about it is she doesn't like the cold. So that's her biggest, like, hold back from getting out snowboarding. Oh, totally. And she, she's going to try it this year, though, so it should be interesting to get Yay. her up there. yeah. Bundle her up, get her up there. <laughs> get her the heated boots. <laughs> yeah, get her the, that's a good call. Get her a whole heated suit. I, I'm thinking a space suit, maybe, like the moon. You get, that'll, get the that'll space keep suit. you warm. That'll keep you warm. Well, the, yeah. thing, the thing that's cool, though, is snowboarding, it fucking rules. Yeah. It rules. And so and the culture we, we gotta rules. like We got to make sure people realize that it fucking rules and it's make sure job. people see that it rules. So they're like, oh, and see different ethnicities doing it. So they're like, that person looks like me. I should do that. In the same way girls are seeing girls' crews doing it, they're saying, oh, light bulb's going off. I'm a girl. I can do this. Oh, I'm Asian. I can do this. Oh, I'm black. I can do this. Like Seeing Migos out there? Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, that was totally. dope. Yeah. <laughs> he had his dope kit. Yep. Well, what was that? Um, who was in the indoor snow dome in... Uh... Oh, I don't know if I saw that one. <sighs> but Quavo was in Aspen with, like, Kevin Hart. Yep. <laughs> and I don't know who was in the indoor one. Oh, somebody's gonna know. I want to say it was like Kodak, Kodak or something. Like it was that. a Kodak black, but it wasn't. It was some. It was someone like that. But anyway, Julio's way in the shredding. Yeah, I remember <laughs> that from back in the day. Yeah. 
But that's cool. You know what else? I'll circle him back. You doing that demo is is a cool idea because that's gonna like maybe open the eyes up to show other women like wow look at all these brands look at all this woman stuff like yeah look at the art look at the fashion like, and just me- and just meeting that's like another thing is just meeting, meeting more, women. more women that are into it yeah. and it's it's like i didn't really have that until i moved to hi- or worked at high cascade yeah it was like oh you like doing this too and you could bring that to a whole yeah. group of different women that might see like wow this is insane like i can come up here my husband go do his thing and the girls and i can hang or we all can hang, whatever, and that's really cool to to bring more and in, in, make it more inclusive for them. That's really cool. Yeah, I hope and it's it smart works. for your brands. You know, <laughs> yeah. I think it'd make you more valuable to your brands. And then it strength it strengthens the whole culture of snowboarding as a whole because it's not just this like this one box of person that type of person that does it. It's inclusive. It's you, the gay communities involved. You know, there's different ethnicities, and then it's the, the, maybe the barrier to entry. You know, and, and that. You know, one thing when you were talking earlier is thinking about this that foundation and how expensive it is. And then we're in Utah, we're flying to the Midwest to go snowboard, <laughs> and we're in the biggest mountains in the world, and we're going to these little trash hills. So it's almost like we need to push for the relatable small snowboarding for people too. I think I don't know. Oh, I, th- I think that's important. Yeah, having events like ride days and and like small gatherings like that is definitely important and i think it, it goes a long way even though it might not seem like it to you at the time it might it it, it mean, might mean something to somebody else mm-hmm. could change yeah. the whole course you of their could life get that like demo to move around a bit to different zones i mean that would be insane you know you could bring a lot of women to snowboarding that's cool yeah well hope. fingers crossed you guys yeah. got <laughs> this i mean women snowboarding's growing and women are I was reading, they're doing a lot more of the buying these days, too. You know, they're writing the checks because mm-hmm. they're going out and getting the sick jobs more than ever and and maybe buying more product than some of the men. And so hopefully they're going to be buying more product. And that's a reason why women's sports are growing, you know. Well, it's cool. Well, there's a lot of change happening. It's nice to embrace it and be a part of the right steps in the right direction. And people willing to take those steps, you know. that's People like yourself, that's dope. And you guys are here to talk about, like, <laughs> give a platform to talk about it. You know, that's important. And we just like to talk shit, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> Me and Buds aren't afraid to talk. No. Nope. <laughs> Maybe a little too much. Yeah, too much probably <laughs> at times. I don't know. <laughs> give us a garage and some microphones. We will talk all day. <laughs> <laughs> Not that difficult of a job. Yeah, Not true. Difficult. Be yourself. Talk some shit. He has all the knowledge of rails and stuff. I don't remember anything, but he, I can Buds talk to him. Buds is usually shit. there, and he doesn't even remember. I, I, I think, yeah. I feel I, like I've you're shot there. with both of you guys many times. Couldn't tell you if you're goofy or regular. Because <laughs> I'm like in my head, it's the same. Because I surf one way, skate one way, snowboard. Oh, yeah. And so it's like, in my mind, it's like the same thing. So it's so weird to me. I couldn't. I could guess, but I got a 50 fit. It's like a coin toss. It's so. a coin toss. <laughs> I know so, MFM's goofy. Correct? Yeah, that's yeah, correct. That's that. correct. So you filmed your part this year, Tangle coming out, Snowboarder Mag. Supposed allegedly, people are saying it's a banger. Streets are talking. Um, and then now you got you got a job, you got a career type of job, or you got a job in the off season. In the off season. And what's going on with that? Um, so right now I'm a seasonal photo stylist for Backcountry.com. And so I work in the studio, and we are just shooting on model right now. So Being I, a stylist, too, is tough, right? It's kind of crazy. Yeah. It's I didn't think... If you mess it up, a brand gets bummed, too. I don't know if you've dealt with that yet. Like, the wrinkles are wrong, or it sits weird. People yeah. are intense. Our, our, um, our creative director is awesome, though. He's, he's like, about mixing brands, because it's, like, it's retail. Oh, really? So they're mixing brands. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be full head to toe. Yeah, it doesn't you know, have to... So well, people, together. like, won't... Well, do people buy things head yeah. to toe? You know, like the average consumer doesn't. That's very good idea. Doesn't I didn't really think about do that. that. So, it's been it's been cool because I I get to mix up outfits and kind of try to figure out the outdoor person and display that. And getting that retail, um, like learning about that is huge. That'll take you a long way as well, especially with backcountry. I mean, I, I'm excited. These guys cause are selling some units. Yeah. It's it's studio work, so I'm, I'm, that's something that I'm, I'm not familiar with. Like my previous job, I I worked a lot with 
the products. So, so that was cool learning about all that. And then um, coming into this, it's more hands-on. Yeah. So I don't have to, like, sit at a computer and... Studio's fun. Yeah, studio's a lot of fun. You're on and your feet. You did a big snowboarder max shoot, too. Yeah, that was S- so fun. Making moves. Same career, but just in a different shoot. Right? Yeah. Same was, deal. Yeah, I got None to... None of the photographers showed up, so uh, <laughs> these guys just took the... Took the reins. Of COVID. No, it's because of COVID. <laughs> I get well, there was all sorts of stuff going on. Yeah, that, it was a hectic why we, time. Like, Oli couldn't get out of Canada. Oh, my gosh. So that, you know what I mean? Because you can't cross the border. Mm-hmm. There was a death in someone's family. It was, it was just a mess. But you guys took the reins, handled it, and yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I kind awesome. of just invited I myself. <laughs> I was like, Ted was like, I'm going to go to this shoe. And I was like, well, I'm coming with you. Like, tell Pat I'm coming. <laughs> and then you're, there you are shooting Danny Cass. Yeah, he was awesome. That's dope. So uh, you got the, you got your website too. Des brought up what, what's in the future for Nerve. What are we talking? Yeah. What get, what you, let's talk futures talk. Yeah, I got. I so I put together a website um, with everything happening. I was I've just been it's kicking it around in my head and was like I got to just get this all out on in the world. And so I put everything together like snowboarding and the work I've done, and pretty much, um, I was like I'm open for freelancing work because I think that I could you know, give a unique, unique ex- exper- uh, perspective on everything because it's like, okay, everyone wants to be more diverse. Everyone wants to, like, tell this story. They incorporate it in the marketing. So you see models or people that are minorities, but the people driving that story and the narrative mm-hmm. are mostly white males. And so it feels kind of inauthentic it's inauthentic it is. Yeah, at the end of up. the day call it how it is and i think bringing more people that are in those minorities is important in, to bring them into the company like themselves like those people can work within the company and give a narrative that is authentic to that brand what's the website called it's just my name Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing fancy. <laughs> That's dope, though. Yeah. Getting out there and making some moves. Brands, if you're watching or listening, she's for hire. Pay her some buku biscuits. Yeah, we talking biscuits. Cheddar biscuits. But snowboarding first. Like, that was, that was for me, it's been, like, I love snowboarding. And I've been, I've been stuck it out for this long, mm-hmm. you know? And, like, I, I want to be able to contribute what I've learned and the experiences that I've gone through, like, within snowboarding. Well, that's what's rad. You can bring that to a brand authentically, and you've been through so many different things, and you got more to come, and putting out video parts and making movies, and that's that's awesome, you know? I'm excited. Yeah, good for you. So that's kind of how you've been spending the quarantine and spending your getting your thoughts together and getting it out there? Yeah, that's good. I was... Did you design your own website, too? I just use Squares, uh, yes, Squarespace. They make it, they make they make it, it so, so easy. Nice now. Yeah, yeah, they make it super easy. You look like a super pro. Yeah. That's cool. But, yeah, you. so that was... Um, that's Because I've done web, website uh, building before, so it was just like... It's fun for me. Mm-hmm. It is fun. And how else are you feeling about the other state of current affairs as far as COVID and how's the mental health? The and discovering of aliens. You, yeah, yeah, aliens. Just the crazy unstable ground we're all standing like there, on right There are. I, yeah. There's aliens for they sure. They keep coming up with new stuff too, man. Like every Let's talk week, aliens. I love talking aliens. Dude. Let's get into it. I, I just think that they they exist. Yep. And just pro- like probability-wise, it's... They have to. Yeah. I'm with it. Yeah. <laughs> and the government is saying they don't know where these things came from. They're basically <laughs> saying they exist. Yeah. With, it's like a soft launch into Let's just call it kind of a drip. Yeah. There's, there's slow, a slow release. It's trickling. Dude, it's I trickling. heard this new one, man, about this. I think it's called Dolce Base. Have you heard this one? No. Oh, man. It's, it's pretty intense, man. Apparently in, uh, I believe it's in New Mexico. I could be wrong. I'll link, link it up. There's this full base that basically is like... They, and people have gone there with equipment and figured out that there are tunnels that go down like seven stories. And apparently humans and aliens work there together. And it's been going on and they find out that all these people that have been getting abduct- abducted have been... Basically, the aliens give us technology. We let them pull some people off the streets <laughs> and do whatever they do. And it's like a full full thing that was... Uh, 
redacted papers on this. I'll link it up. It's insane. Question is, uh, wh- where are you getting this intel? Yeah. Out of curiosity. Dude, there's a whole. <laughs> so here's the deal about conspiracy theories. I enjoy them just because I like sci-fi. Um, so I listen to them, but a good conspiracy theorist will be like, do your own research. So they encourage you. They don't just. They're not just like. This is what's up. Listen to it. I'm not they're afraid like, to throw the tinfoil hat on yeah, with you. You go want, down those wormholes. They they're you, fun. They want you to go up and look up. Okay, like let's see these government files on this place, and what are the other stories on this place? Who else is saying? You know, this? Bodhi. Bodhi claims he was abducted by aliens. Yeah, he like never he, had a dream. He's again never had a dream oh, yeah. since. I rem- yeah, we got to get him on here talking yeah. aliens. I want to hear the see here what's up. Never and so, a dream. I don't know if this base is real, but the story's awesome. So, <laughs> I'll link it up. I'll yeah. click the link. Yeah. It, <laughs> dude, I'm telling you, man. This Yeah, the one podcast I listen to is called Theories of the Third Kind, and they got the one about the DMT, however, it's called, like, Machine Elves or something. Everyone sees these crazy machine elves. That's that's the one to start with right there. You know what? Hopefully aliens come out, and they like, they're like, yo, I, I, want, a, I want a snowboard. And they just kind of, like, We could get bust. a whole new market. We get a whole new market. And hopefully they, they buy the – they start buying Solomons. They start listening in to the bomb the hole. You know what I mean? They're buying merch. Yeah. Hey, we got merch. Bombhole.com. Aliens, if you're listening, we will ship to you as yeah. well. We <laughs> ship uh, intergalactically. <laughs> Why not? Uh, Why not? Yeah, dude, I think we can oh, wrap, we can wrap course. it up. Though. Yeah, I think we did it. Wrap. We, we if you're done, two is hours. that chill if we wrap? Yeah. yeah. I'm <laughs> is there anything we haven't covered that you want to talk? Or I, I feel like I can't remember. I kind of blacked out. You got anybody you want to thank for this conversation? I want to thank my family, Ted, Lewis, um, all my sponsors, um, you guys, of course. And we, it's our pleasure having you on. And then um, everyone who's ever helped me with and like guided me through all of this. Shout out. Incredible. The, the coolest thing about the Shred community is there is a lot of help out there if you look for it, if you're kind to other people. It's going to reciprocate, and that's the best thing about our community. Yeah, you just have to ask. Yeah, don't be scared. We'll love it. We really appreciate having you on, Nerve. Thank you guys for listening, watching. We'll see you next Wednesday. Over and out from the bomb hole. Good night. Good morning. Good morning.